20 no okay so republic act number 7920 no so this is an act providing for a more responsive and comprehensive regulation for the practice licensing and registration of electrical engineers and electrician so sa sa title pa lang ng ano ng uh, RA 7920 so its main purpose is to provide a more responsive and comprehensive regulation so yung pag -re pag regulate no, which is um yung ang ang pag ang pag regulate ay mabilisan at tama no sa practice no the practice the licensing and the registration of electrical engineers and electrician so article 1 of RA 7920 is all about the title and the definition of terms no so section 1 the title so this act shall be known as the new electrical engineering law no so yun yung tawag sa RA 7920 so this is during the the promulgation of the law no way back 1995 so because before the RA 7920 meron tayong RA 1 uh, 180 which is the old electrical engineering law so yun na ano yun siya na na supersede yun or na amend na amend yun so naging RA 7920 or the new electrical engineering law but now kasi yung new yung term na new is hindi na siya applicable no kasi 1995 tapos ngayon at uh, 2022 na so yung term na new is hindi na siya applicable no so from the IIEE so the RA7920 is now known as the National Electrical Engineering Law or the NE uh, NEEL or the NIL no? National Electrical Engineering Law okay so section 2 definition of terms so these are the terms that are used under the RA7920, no? the practice of electrical engineering no? is, uh, we can say nga, ang person, ang tao ay nagpa-practice ng electrical engineering if he renders or offers to render professional electrical engineering services in the form of, so meron niyang mga, uh, mga work, no? mga, uh, mga klase ng engineer, ng electrical engineering services so first we have consultation investigation valuation and management of services requiring electrical engineering knowledge so if you are consulting or investigating or getting the value or you are a you are managing or nagmamanage ka ng ng isang ano ng isang firm or isang company or isang project na nagre-require ng electrical engineering knowledge therefore you are practicing electrical engineering so that is the first no the first act no of practice of electrical engineering the next is design and preparation of plans specification and estimates for electrical power system power plants power distribution system including power transformers transmission lines a network protect protection, switch gear, building wiring, electrical machines, equipment, and other. So, design and preparation. No? So, kasama din yan sa practice of electrical engineering. So, in your design and, and preparation, so, mga plano or na mga specifications, including creating the estimates no? sa lahat ng mga system that requires electrical energy. So, if you are doing that, then you are practicing electrical engineering. Supervision of erection, installation, and testing, and commissioning of power plants, substation, transmission lines, industrial plants, and others. No? So, when you say supervision, so ikaw yung nagsusupervise of erection. So, when we say erection, yung paggawa or pagbuo. Installation and testing and commissioning of power plants substation and transmission line industrial plants among others so, so pag yan yung ginagawa mo then you are practicing 
the field of electrical engineering. So for vision of operation and maintenance of electrical equipment in power plants, industrial plants, watercraft, electric locomotives, and others. So all supervision and maintenance of electrical equipment, if you are doing that, so that is under the practice of electrical engineering. Supervision of the manufacture and repair of electrical equipment, including switchboards, transformers, generators, motors, apparatus, and others. So, ibig sabihin ito, if, if you are working in a manufacturing company which manufactures electrical equipment, katulad ng panel board, switchboard, transformer generators, then you are practicing, no? practicing electrical engineering. Then, teaching of electrical engineering professional subjects. So, if you are teaching uh, subjects in in electrical engineering course, then you are also practicing the field of electrical engineering. Then, taking charge of the sale and distribution of electrical equipment and system requiring engineering calculations or applications of engineering data. So, sale. So, yung pagbibenta or pagbidistribute ng electrical equipment or pagbibenta ng system no? na nangangailangan ng, ng engineering calculations and applications of engineering data which is, which is uh, all about uh, electrical systems so you are also practicing the field of electrical engineering. Okay? So, lahat ng yun, no? itong from number 1 up to number 7, so those are the fields of electrical practice of electrical engineering. So, kasi yung RA7920 is regulating the practice of electrical engineering. So, if you are doing all of this from 1 to 7, so the consultation, the design, the supervision of erection installation, the supervision of operation and maintenance, so supervision of manufacture, teaching of electrical engineering, then taking charge of the sale and distribution. So if you are doing the either one of these, no, kahit isa lang, then you are practicing the field of electrical engineering and therefore, you must follow the, uh, the RA 7920. No? Kasi yung RA 7920, that is the law on the practice of electrical engineering. Okay, next, definition. Electrical supply equipment is any equipment which produces, modifies, regulates, or controls the supply of electrical energy. So, yun yung electrical supply equipment. Electrical plant, so it is an establishment or a system for the production and modification of electrical energy. So, yung plant, electrical plant, so ginagawa niyan is uh, production and manufacturing of electrical energy energy okay next power plant design so refers to planning uh, specifying coordinating the layouting of electrical equipment in power plant substation and the like so yun yung power plant design substation is any building room or separate place which houses or encloses electrical supply equipment connected to transmission or distribution lines and the interior of which is accessible as a role only to properly qualified persons. So, yan yung substation. Electrical system design so refers to the choice of electrical system including planning and detailing of requirement for protection, control, monitoring, coordination, and interlocking of the electrical system among others. The next we have voltage. No? So, voltage is the highest effective potential difference between any two conductors of the circuit concerned ex which, which express in volt. No? So, sa RA 7920, it is also said that the unit for voltage is volts. No? So, kasama yan sa RA 7920 as per article as per article uh, Article 1, Section 2G, no? 2G, it's a definition of terms. Okay, next we have TVA, no? refers to the installed capacity of alternating current or AC electrical 
plant or supply equipment or the connected load of industrial plants, commercial establishment, institutional buildings expressed in kilovolts. So as per um, RA 720 Article 1 Section 2H, kapag yung ating supply is AC, the the capacity ng ating load no or the or the capacity of the supply must be rated in kva no kapag ac if dc naman so dito, di, dito tayo sa i no the kilowatt or kw so refers to the installed capacity of a direct current electric plant on board of watercraft express in kilowatt so if our supply is dc kilowatt so kaya ang um, if we are going to to give the you know, the the installed capacity yung installed capacity ng isang generator so ang kaniyang ano ang kaniyang rating kapag AC generator yan is kVA sa transformer naman kVA din but when it comes to the installed capacity of a of a solar uh, solar module or solar array no yung yung solar panel natin naka kilowatts yan because that is per RA 7920 kasi yung solar the the output of solar is DC no DC kaya kilowatt or watts yung sa at yung sa transformer naman natin at yung sa AC generator is kVA no kasi AC yun siya no then utilization equipment so refers to the energy consuming equipment including motors, heaters, furnaces, light sources, and other devices which you utilize electric energy for any purpose. So, ang shortcut ng utilization equipment is the load. No? Yung, yung part ng ating system na, na gumagamit sa ating supply or sa ating electrical energy. No? So, yun yung utilization equipment. Okay. Industrial plant or factory, so refers to manufacturing, assembly plants, including engineering shops, shipyards, or other bis uh, businesses or business endeavors where electrical machinery and equipment are installed. So kapag naka-install yan siya sa isang plant or any manufacturing plant, ang tawag dyan is industrial plant or factory. Commercial establishment are department stores, supermarkets, shopping malls, office buildings, hotels, theaters, stadiums, condominiums, convention centers, restaurants, and the like used for business profit or profit. So, kapag may profit or, or a certain building or a certain establishment is used for business, so ang tawag dyan is commercial establishment. Then you have institutional buildings. So, these are school buildings, hospitals, museums, display center, government buildings and the like so all buildings that is uh, that is used by the public na uh, na manage and run by the, the government so ang tawag yun is institutional buildings no so there are also it, it, uh, there are also institutional uh, building na hindi siya run by the government but they are non-profit so if, if if those buildings are non-profit, no, we are school, private school, and that private school is a non-profit school. Therefore, that that building is considered to be institutional. Pero kapag yung private school na yun is is a school na may profit, no, so by law na uh, sa 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 law na nag 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 nag-establish sa school na yun is naka nakalagay doon that that is a a school which is um, uh, having profit so therefore therefore yung school na yun is a commercial building no kapag wala naman that is considered as a non-profit school so ang tawag doon is institutional building then watercraft no is any waterborne unit which is designed and built to have electrical plant no so watercraft ang tawag doon for example if we have a boat no boat tatapos ang Ang, ang boat natin is bangka lang so there there is no um, motor or there, there is no generator walang generator na nasa loob ng ating boat o sa ating bangka so that is not considered a watercraft pero kapag may kapag may generator na ang isang boat so ang tawag na doon is watercraft and and a, and the electrical system 
uh, found and installed and maintained inside a watercraft should follow the standards and the provisions under RA 7920. No? Then electric locomot locomotives refers to the power plant mounted on wheels as used in rail railroad transportation industry, yung tren. No? Yung tren, yan yung ele electric locomotive. Which is under Philippine Electrical Code is not uh, is not one of the scope. So, hindi siya kasama sa scope ng Philippine Electrical Code. No? So, ang kasama lang sa scope ng Philippine Electrical Code is the station and the locomotive or railroad switchyards. No? You you yun na kasama pero yung mismong train if you are going to do some um, wiring sa, sa train so we will use a different code hindi uh, hindi natin susundin yung mga standard na nasa Philippine Electrical Code no? next so article 2 the BEE or the Board of Electrical Engineering no? so the main purpose of the Board of Electrical Engineering is to, to, to yung kanilang mga responsibility. So, naman tayo, unahin muna natin ang composition. No? So, the Board of Electrical Engineering, which which is hereafter, no, sa whole part ng law will be called as the Board, shall be created as a collegial body under general supervision and administrative control of the PRC or the Professional Regulations Commission which is hereafter will be also called as the commission. No? So it is composed of a chairman and two members to be appointed by the President of the Philippines from among the recommendees of the Commissioner of the PRC, which, uh, which is hereafter referred to as the Commissioner, who were chosen from the nominees of the Integrated and Accredited Association of Electrical Engineers and other registered associations of electrical engineers and allied fields. Okay, so ito. Paano natin kinukuha yung mga members ng board? No? So, yung members ng board, so, meron tayong isang chairman, no? which is the chairman of the Board of Electrical Engineering. So, ang tawag sa kanya is the chairman of the Board of Electrical Engineering or the chairman of the BEE. Then, may dalawang members. So, sino nag appoint Ang nag appoint is the President of the of the Philippines. So, saan kinukuha ng President of the Philippines yung mga names ng kanyang ina-appoint? So, it is coming from the recommendees o yung mga ni-recommend ni ng Commissioner of the Philippine uh, of the Professional Regulations Commission or ng PRC. Saan naman kinukuha ni Commissioner yung mga names ng kanyang i, -i ng kanyang ano ng, ng kanyang i-recommend. So, galing yan sa mga nominees ng, uh, ng accredited na as association ng electrical engineers, no? which is sa Pilipinas, so there is only one accredited association of electrical engineers, including master electricians. No? Ang tawag doon is the IIEE or the Integrated Institute of electrical engineers no so yung yung mga ni ni ay uh, yung mga nominated ng IIEE yun yung i-recommend ng PRC commissioner na kung sige naman doon ang ang magustuhan ng president is kanyang i-appoint no ang tanong is kung pwede ba na kahit sino ang i-nominate ng IIEE so meron din yang uh, qualifications. No? Pero bago yan, dito tayo sa powers and duties of the board. No? So, the board shall exercise executive slash administrative quasi legislative and quasi judicial. So, anong ibig sabihin ng tatlong ito? So, when we, when we say executive and administrative, so they will they will execute and administer the, the provisions of RA 7920. Ano mang sinasabi ng RA 7920, sila yung magsasabi doon. No? Na dapat ito ang sundin, dapat sundin natin to sa all electrical electrical practitioners. No? Then, quasi-legislative rulemaking. So, 
ito yung mga power ng board na mag palabas ng mga uh, ng mga resolution or memorandum no quasi legislative quasi judicial is yung kanilang power na mag-investigate if there are any malpractice o yung mga uh, yung mga electrical engineer na hindi sumusunod sa RA 7920 or hindi or hindi sumusunod sa Code of Ethics for Electrical Engineers or um, sa PEC so meron silang power to investigate no okay so yung kanilang mga specific na responsibilities and duties is first to supervise and regulate determine and evaluate prepare examination questions so kasama yan sa kanilang mga duties and responsibilities so ang ibig sabihin kung ano man ang lalabas na exam or questions ngayong uh, September 5 no, during your exam so yung mga question na yun ang gumawa doon is the BEE or the Board of Electrical Engineers so, at silang tatlo lang din ang nakakaalam kung ano ang mga sagot noon no kung kung sabi niya may leakage so there's no such thing as leakage because there are only three persons na nakakaalam ng tamang sagot ng bawat question na yon which is the BEE no prescribe amend or revise the requirements for the PEE no so if may gustong mag-apply ng PEE so sila din yung mag pre-prescribe -pre or mag-revise ng mga requirements then register successful applicants for PEE then issue special permit to individual foreign electrical engineers and electricians no so because we have the the exception sa sa licensing lalo na if we have foreign electrical engineers na yung kanilang specialty is talagang kailangan sa sa isang company na wala namang uh, Filipino na may alam sa ganun na work so they could give special permit for do, for those foreign electrical engineers then look into the conditions of the practice of electrical engineering from uh, electrical engineering electrical engineering Profession. Then, promulgate rules and regulation including the Code of Ethics. No? Kaya yung gumawa ng Code of Ethics are the BEE. Investigate. So, ito yung kanilang ano, quasi-judicial power. Um, investigate violations of the Act and the rules and regulation. Issued subpoena or subpoena doses take home to secure attendance of the respondent. So, if ever there is an investigation tapos ikaw yung gusto nilang i-investigate so they could issue you as uh, a subpoena to require you na talagang mag-attend then they delegate the investigation of the case to the chairman render decision order or resolution of preliminary investigation then after due notice and hearing cancel examination papers and or bar any examining from the future examination so for example if during an examination so meron tayong tinatawag na irik mga mga violation no for example mayroong isang trainee na nagdala ng review material sa sa testing center because during the exam hindi ka pwedeng magdala ng review materials inside the testing center so if you were if you if you have a a review material or a reviewer so dapat iwan mo yun sa bahay niyo kung saan or kung saan kayo nag stay kasi when when you are inside the venue dapat wala kang dadalhin na kahit anong review materials or else you will be bar bar or um, or mabablock kayo no in taking future examination and also your your examination result will be also cancelled no so yeah yun yung pinaka ano pinaka importante that during the examination pag nasa venue na kayo no inside the premises of the venue you are not allowed to bring any review material then administer administer oath in connection with the administration so yung oath for the ano for the for the newly no newly 
um, pass na mga professionals or mga electrical engineers or master electrician. Then, submit annual report. So, yung kanilang annual report is kanilang i is isasubmit sa commissioner ng PRC. Then, prosecute and institute criminal action against any violator of the act. So, if meron mang hindi makasunod sa provisions ng RA 7920, so pwede sila mag pataw ng kaukulang parusa. No? Adapt an official seal with a co co seal coordinate with the commission and the department of education. No? Prescribe guidelines and criteria on CPE. So, dati ang tawag dyan is CPE but now we, we we know that one as the CPD, no? CPD program for professional electrical engineers. No? Then perform such other functions and duties as may be necessary to implement effectively this act. Okay, so ito na yung qualifications of the members. So first, dapat uh, natural born Filipino citizen within 5 years residency. No? So dapat nakatira siya sa Pilipinas uh, within uh, with 5 years no or more ang kanyang ang kanyang pagtira dito tapos natural born Filipino 35 years of age with high moral values not convicted no by any offense of moral turpitude by any court tapos holder of the degree of uh, bachelor of science in electrical engineering or BSEE tapos dapat professional no be a professional electrical engineer with a valid certificate of registration and a valid professional license they don't have practice electrical engineering for a period of not less than 10 years prior to his appointment so dapat uh, at least mention 10 years of experience sa field ng electrical engineering to be appointed as uh, as a member of the BEE then not be an official nor a member of the faculty nor have a pecuniary interest. So, dapat wala siyang connection sa kahit anong university which is offering electrical engineering. No? In terms of office, no? the members of the board shall hold office for a term of three years. No? So, they will be uh, uh, three years, no? not a long term. No? or until their successor shall have been appointed and qualified. So, pwede din na ma-extend ang kanilang term if in case walang mahanap na kapalit. O kung meron mang mahanap, mahanap na kapalit, the, the successors are not qualified. No? So, pwede niya ma-extend. No? But their minimum number of years is 3 years. The vacancies in the board shall be filled by the by the precedent so same process no? if mayroon tayo yung vacancy the the IIEE will nominate the the commissioner of the PRC ang ang magre-recommend tapos ang mag-appoint is the president of the Philippines so removal of board members so any member of the board may be removed by the president of the Philippines Upon recommendation of the commissioner for the neglect of duty in competence must malpractice commission or tolerance of irregularities in the examination or for unprofessional, unethical, or disorderable conduct after having been given the opportunity to defend himself in a proper administrative investigation. So, ang pwede makarimove sa mga, sa mga members ng board is the one who appointed them. So, the President of the Philippines. No? After na nirecommend ng commissioner na sila ay napatunayang may ginawang mali. So, therefore, they, they can be moved by the President of the Philippines. Then, compensation of the chairman and the board. So, dito nakalagay dito 12,000. No? That is way back 1995. No? So, if, if we will compute the ano the the inflation rate so ito hindi na to 12,000 ngayon no so ito medyo uh, mataas na sa ng konti but with regards to the law so this is the minimum no 12,000 then the chairman shall receive a monthly compensation of 10% more so meaning yung itong itong 12,000 times times a uh, plus 10% ng 12,000 yan nang yung 
uh, yan na yung ano, sweldo ng chairman. So that such compensation shall be increased or modified pursuant to the GAA or the General Appropriations Act of the year. No? Provided furthermore that they shall re receive other benefits that may be provided for by the law. No? So exec exec executive officer of the board. Okay, so the executive officer of uh, the board, the board is the commissioner shall be the executive officer of the board and shall conduct the examination given by the board and shall designate any subordinate officer of the commission to act as secretary and custodian of all records including all examination and papers and minutes of deliberation of the board. So yung exec Yung executive officer ng board is the commissioner of the PRC. Okay, examination and registration. So, so ang pinakamain duty ng BEE is the examination and registration of the uh, the REE, PEE, and the RME. No? So, examination required. So, it is required under Section 10, Article 3 that all applicants for registration for the practice of electrical engineering in the Filip in in the Philippines shall be required to pass a technical exam as hereafter provided except as otherwise is specifically allowed under this act so, kasi meron sa merong merong ano exception for article 3 section 10 no so dulo sa sabi ko kanina those are only applicable for foreign electrical engineers no pero if you are going to practice electrical engineering in the Philippines so you must be able to pass a technical exam no either either that exam is is a written exam or a actual demonstration or an interview exam no Okay. Next. So, registration and license required. A valid certificate of registration and a valid professional license from the commission, so yung commission yung PRC, are required before any person is allowed to practice the for practice electrical engineering in the Philippines except as other otherwise allowed under this act. So, anong, anong, anong ibig sabihin nito? So, you cannot practice electrical engineering uh, if you have, if you don't have a valid certificate of registration, ano ibig sabihin ng valid? Hindi pa expire, no? Tapos, valid din na professional license. So, hindi yun expire. Now, if ever that, your license, no? If ever you will pass na exam, if ever ma-expire yung license na yun, then you are not allowed to practice electrical engineering as long as hindi mo yun na-renew. Okay, so examination fees, no? So, all applicants for oral examinations sa PEE, tapos written sa REE at RME, are subject to payment prescribed by the commission. No? So, 90% ng payment nyo is napupunta sa mga special fund for programs, projects, and activities of the commission, while the remaining 10% will be set aside as trust fund for the establishment and maintenance of Center for Continuing Education and Research. Then, Section 13, so aside from exam ex examination fees na galing na from Section 12, so meron din tayong registration fees if ever kayo ay pumasa. No? So meron tayong registration fee and licensing fee and fines. So nakakaroon lang tayo ng fines if na-delay kayo sa pag-renew ng inyong expired license. No? So ang tawag dyan is arrears. No? So, all applicants for registration and license to practice in PEE, REE, or RME shall be subject to the payment of registration fees, license license fees, and fines in case 
violation of the pertinent rules and regulation for the amount prescribed by the board and approved by the commission. Now, if you are taking RME, no, ang examination fee for RME is 600, no? So, 600. No? Then, if you, if ang style niya sa pagbayad ng 600 is through PMAYA or GCash, no? During your appointment, so, mag add lang kayo ng 10 pesos, no? During naman sa pagpasa niyo, so, we will we will pay for the re registration fee and the license fee, including na yung ID niyo, no? So, ang inyo, ah, ang inyong, Ang inyo ang uh, ang inyong babayaran more or less is 800 pesos, no? Okay, next. Exemption, no, from the examination and registration. So ito yung um exception ng section 10. Makikita sa section 14, article 3. No? So ibig sabihin noon, so i-short na lang to. Yung mga foreign electrical engineers na ang kanilang specialty is is wala dito, no? Walang qualified na Filipino engineer or walang may alam sa kanilang specialty pero kailangan na may na may na, na may i-construct na planta or or industrial plant or commercial build, building na nangangailangan ng ganong a uh, uh, special work tapos walang Filipino engineers na kaya or may alam no na meron lang is yung galing sa ibang bansa yung mga foreigner na electrical engineers pwede na hindi na sila required to take the examination no to take the to take the examination so pwede na they, they will be given a special license no pero dapat may mga condition the first condition is that foreign that the foreign electrical engineers are legally qualified to practice their profession in their own country. Ano yung ibig sabihin nun? So if if he is a foreign electrical engineer, dapat validated ang kanyang license sa kanyang bansa na kung saan siya nanggaling. So he must be also a elect uh, for uh, a elect electrical engineer sa kanyang bansa na may valid ID. Then the scope of work to be performed by said foreign professional shall be limited only to the particular work for which they were contracted. So, kung ano yung kanyang dapat gawin, ang scope ng kanyang work na dito, doon lang siya. If lumabas siya doon, so he he will now be required to get another permit. Or kapag meron namang kayang pwedeng gumawa noon ng kanyang trabaho na labas na sa kanyang exemption, so po, Ang, ang mangyayari doon is kukuha na siya or magtitake na siya ng exam. So, that prior to commencing work, the foreign professional shall secure a special permit from the commission. No, So, before mag-start, dapat meron na siyang special permit. That the said foreign professional shall not engage in private practice. So, hindi siya pwede uh, yun nga, hindi siya pwede gumawa ng ibang trabaho. No? Nalagpas sa kanyang ano, sa kanyang scope dito. That for every foreign professional contracted pursuant to the section, one Filipino understudy who is registered under the provision of this act shall be employed. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Pag siya, kapag siya ay may special permit na dapat meron siyang apprentice na Filipino electrical engineer. No? He, he, hindi pwede na wala siyang apprentice. So, yun ibig sabihin ng understudy. So, dapat meron siyang apprentice na Filipino. So that is done para in case man na may na na may uh, na may mangyari ulit na ganun so there is now a a Filipino electrical electrical engineer na may alam na sa kanyang specialty para hindi na natin kailangan na bigyan pa siya ng uh, exemption no or kunin pa siya for that purpose so that the exception here in shall granted be good only for Six months. So, six months lang ang validity ng kanyang permit, no? And should be renewed for another six months at the discretion of the board. So, if ever hindi patapos after six months, so, i-renew niya ulit, no? For the next six, six months, pag hindi, pag hindi pa matapos, renew ulit for the next six months na nakadepende na sa BEE, if they will approve or not. 
Okay, so no registration with the board shall be required for the following. So first, yung mga engineering students, apprentice, and other persons employed or acting as subordinate. No, ano ibig sabihin? If you are an engineering student, apprentice, or isang electrician na you are doing doing some electrical work no or undergoing training then you are not required to have a certificate of station or mag take ng exam or valid license as long as you are under the supervision of a licensed professional so kunyari electrician ka no so you can practice electrical engineering pwede kang magwiring as long as you are under the supervision of a licensed electrical practitioner either you are under the direct supervision of an RME REE or PEE tapos person in charge of supervising the operation of gensets no for private employing not exceeding 250 volts and a capacity and a capacity not exceeding 50 kVA you know? provided that the owner of the shall be required to have an electrical generating set practically inspected of not more than one year by a professional electrical engineer REE uh, city or municipal government authority exercising legal jurisdiction over electrical installation so, pwede na ikaw yung mag-maintain ng isang ginset, which is 250, no? hindi lang kapasang 250, at 50 kVA, as long as yung establishment, will, yung ginset niya will be inspected by a professional electrical engineer or a registered electrical engineer every, uh, every one year or hindi lang pas ng isang taon. So, ibig sabihin yan, annually may mag inspect sa ano sa mini sa mini maintain mo na ginset pero dapat ang voltahe ng ginset is to 50 volts at tapos hindi rin hindi rin lalagpas ng 50 kVA okay next holding of examination so examinations no of the the electrical engineering no so PE RME and RME so ang mag schedule niyan is yung board no which is given twice a year in the city of Manila and other places so nakadepende na yan no kung ano yung mga idadagdag na examination venue ng ati, ng BEE so the, quali the qualified applicants for examination so notice of admission so yung no one you shall be issued not later than 10 days prior to the first day of examination. So yung yung no one yo no dapat ma maibigay yan sa inyo if, if ever man it will not be given sa time na nag-apply kayo for the examination so dapat maibigay yan hindi ano hindi bababa ng 10 days before the first day of examination. So kunyari ano uh, yung examination is September 5. So dapat uh, next week no next week you can now you could claim your noa no kasi five uh, ten working days so meron lang tayong five five days na per week na consider natin as working days so dapat by monday you can now get your noa that is according to RA 7920 but usually ang sinasabi ng ano ng PRC if if you cannot get immediately your NOAA, ang sinasabi nila is balik ka na lang one week before the exam. No? Ganun ang sinasabi nila. Ang, may namin nags nagtatanong, bakit hindi agad nabibigay yung NOAA? Because, ang, ang, ang ginagawa kasi ng, ano, na pilip ng, ng PRC is nire-review muna nila at binavalidate yung mga, si yung mga sinabmit nyo na papers. Lalo na if you are taking the RMA because you are giving documents like your certificate of employment and your certificate of experience. Ang 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 ginagawa ng PRC niyan is they will sometimes um validate no kanilang binavalidate either ta, either ta, tatawagan na yung 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 
yung company niyo or ta or tatawagan nila yung electrical engineer or master electrician or PEE na pumirma ng certificate of experience niyo. No, kaya uh, hindi agad nabibigay yung NOWA at at the time na nag-apply kayo for examination. Meron naman um, especially if you are a BSEE graduate, no? So graduate ka ng electrical engineering um, at the day of the exam at the day of the application yung NOWA mo is agad na na i na, no, na release no kapag nag-apply ka ng RE okay qualifications of applicant for registration as PE so ito for PE so hindi na natin to masyado i ano i, i the detail no kasi we are we are focusing here sa RE na side no so uh, dapat Filipino citizen so walang ano walang wal walang walang conviction tapos graduate ng BSEE tapos pra, tapos he is practicing at least uh, four years as an REE no habang yung REE naman so Filipino citizen at least 21 years of age ganun pa rin walang conviction holder of a BSEE or graduate ng BSEE from school or university or college na recognized ng Philippine government no to tayo sa RME no so uh, sa RME Filipino citizen 18 years of age no sa REE 21 kasi ang kadalasang gumagraduate ng BSEE is 21 years old no but for PEE uh, for RME dapat 18 no? 18 lang yung requirement then good moral values or good or high moral values then hindi siya convicted of any uh, court no or if any offense tapos meron tayong technical background so ito siguro na explain ko na to no first yung sa orientation natin no so dapat 3 years siya na BSEE no nakatapos siya ng third year ng BSEE or any 3 year electrical engineering technology course tapos 1 year experience 2 years experience ta tapos graduate siya dapat ng 2 years electrician course or 2 years uh, electrician sa isang vocational or trade school tapos pwede rin 1 year electrician course tapos 3 years experience kapag high school graduate naman so dapat 5 years experience no kapag no kapag high school graduate 5 years experience so yung experience dapat related sa electrical so electrical works or electrical maintenance or electrical installation or um, electrical repair so dapat ganun yung nakalagay sa inyong certificate of employment as your specific workload no in the scope of examination so sa ito sa PE at sa REE hindi na rin tumasyal yung focus no so yung sa yung sa RME ano lang yan yung ating scope is dalawa lang technical subject no from basic electricity up to transmission lines then uh, Philippine electrical code so the RA 720 electrical safety code of ethics for electrical engineers and the whole Philippine Electrical Code. So, yun yung lahat na topic as the scope of examination for RME. So, report of rating. So, kailan nalabas yung result? So, by law, dapat hindi lalagpas ng 150 days. no? So, itong 150 days this is considering na dati kasi kapag nag-take ng board exam, no? so, lalo na, pa, lalo na pag uh, RE or RME is na siya, written, no? written na is show your solution. Tapos yung nag-check is yung mga BEE. Pero now, ngayon, ang ginagawa kasi is, is computerized na tayo. So, kadalasan 3 to 5 days. So, kunyari, September 5, so mga September 8 or September 10, so meron ng result. No? But the maximum 
according to the law is 150 days. Then, re-examination of failed subjects. So, ito. Ito yung kailangan maintindihan. No? Ang, uh, you will be considered as pass, no? Na nakapasa kayo if your uh, if your average grade is 70%. So, ibig sabihin nun, yung grade nyo sa sa technical subject at grade nyo sa Philippine Electrical Code, ku, kukunin yung yung average nun kapag tumuntong yung ng 70%, then you are considered as a passer. So, pumasa kayo. If hindi, then you are fail. No? Hindi kayo pumasa. Now, there is circumstances na 70% kayo pero hindi kayo considered as fail, ay pass or a passer. Ang tawag doon is conditional. Bakit nangyayari yung ganon? Kasi meron kayong isang subject either sa technical or sa Philippine Electrical Code na less than 50% ang inyong grade. So, kunyari, yung sa ano, yung yung sa ano nyo, sa sa technical subject niyo so ang ang ang, nakyo, ang nakuha niyo lang is 40 no 40% lang tapos medyo ma malaki-laki yung nakuha niyo sa ano sa Philippine Electrical Code so kinuha yung average tumuntong kayo ng 70 pero ang nakalagay sa inyong report of rating is not pass but fail. Kasi, meron kayong isang subject na bumaba ng 50%, which is the technical subject kasi 40% lang, halimbawa. No? So, anong gagawin pag ganun? No? So, you are considered as conditional. If you are conditional, you are only required to take once. No? To take once the subject na bumaba kayo sa 50%. So, sa ating example, 40%. So, sa next na exam, iti-take nyo lang yung technical subject. So, if you will pass that subject, then you will now be considered as a passer. So, ganun yun. If ever, sa next na pag-take nyo, na ang kulang yun is, take, is technical subject lang, bumagsak kayo, the next na mag-take kayo, lahat na naman ang yung iti-take. So, ganun yun for the conditional. Then, out. So, before you are given a ID or a license, so dapat you will undergo an outtaking. So, dapat, so, either you are a PEE, an, R, an REE, or an RME, dapat meron kayong outtaking before you will be given the valid license. Okay. Issue one of the certificate and the professional license. Okay. So, your, your license will have your unique registration number, tapos date of uh, issue ones, no? tapos nakalagay din sa ID kung kailan siya mag-expire. No? At, at the, the norm, kung kailan siya mag-expire is your birth date. No? Birth date ninyo. Okay, so the CPE, so as, as of now we are required para makarinyo tayo, meron tayong CPD. No? So, the required CPD app according to the ano to the to the CPD law na na ginawa ni former uh, former senator at yung ano si Francisco Tren Trillanes no so for for REE RME and PE we are required to have 45 CPD units no pero pero nangyari kasi is mayroong amendment na pinababa yung yung ano yung CPD points. So, ngayon, it is only 15. No? 15 CPD units. No? So, kaya kayo, if ever, you will pass the exam this next month, no? next month, makapasa kayo, then you will be, after 3 years, i-renew nyo yan. So, dapat meron kayong 15 CPD units. At makukuha nyo yan through attending the seminar na, na accredited ng PRC to have CPD units. So, hindi basta-basta kahit uh, kahit anong seminar ang inyong i-attend. Dapat ang i-attend nyo na seminar is yung may accredited 
CPD points na galing sa PRC. Tapos, ang, ang kanyang topic is related sa electrical. No? Then, the integration of electrical engineering profession. So, section 25. So, dito nakalagay yung, yung, mag, yung mga license na electrical practitioner. They are automatic members. No? Members of the the Accredited Electrical Engineering Association. Sa atin ngayon is the IIEE. No? So, if you are if you are a, a passer, then you have a valid license, so you are an automatic member. But, kasi yung ating IIEE, that is an organization, so, may, so mayroon tayong membership fee. No? So, first, dyan ang babayaran is the 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 registration fee and the membership fee para sa IEE. Tapos after that, yearly, ang, ang uh, yearly or annually, ang babayaran nila is the, ano, the annual dues. No? The annual dues. Then, yung seal. So, yung, yung may seal lang or may seal yo is the PEE. The RME and the R RME has no seal. So, wala lang seal yo. Then, the in indication of the re Registration or professional license number. So whatever, uh, whatever documents that you are going to sign, no, which requires your your license. So dapat ilagay nyo yung ano nyo, license number nyo together with the date of registration, that and the date of expiry. No, so yun yung ilagay nyo. Then refusal to issue certificate. So the the BEE, kahit passer kayo, pwede niya na hindi, hindi i-issue yung certificate niyo. Especially if you are found na ano, na, na, na nakita ng board na hindi kayo fit, no? To be a licensed professional or meron kayong ginawang ano, anomalia during the conduct of the examination. Then the the revocation of certificate or or the, or the suspension of the practice of the practice of your profession so ibig sabihin nito meron na kay na issue sa inyo ang license pero meron kayong ginawa no na hindi tama then meron ding right ang board to suspend to suspend or to revoke your license then yung decision ng board is final and exi exi executory unless it is appealed by the respondent so P to the PRC within 15 days no from the receipt of the of such uh, such decision no then pwede niyang i-issue no for example nakita pala na na ano hindi pala hindi pala totoo na may ginawa kayong mali or nag-cheat kayo during the examination no so pwede niyang i-issue ulit ang inyong license or pwede din pag nawala yung license niyo after the expiration of 1 year from the date of revocation no so 1 year after na na-revoke yung inyong license no then sound provisions related to the practice of electrical engineering no so, ito yung mga pro ito yung mga provisions ano yung mga mga ano mga limits ng mga individual electrical practitioners so the field the field of practice for PEE, REE and RME so tatlo lang yan no tatlo lang yung masasabi na um, according to the law tatlo lang yung matatawag na LEP ano yung LEP license electrical practitioner so tatlo lang other than that then you are considered as non licensed electrical practitioner so by R8 uh, 7920 so there are only three no so RME or the registered master electrician REE the registered electrical engineer and the PEE the professional electrical engineer no walang nakalagay sa law na ako considered as licensed professional ele electrical practitioner no or LEP ay yung mga NC holder so wala yan hindi yan nakalagay sa RA 720. So, therefore, it is a malpractice. No? So, hindi tama na 
if you are a, a holder of an NC certificate na uh, sasabihin niyo that you are a licensed electrical no so hindi by law by RA 720 you are not considered as licensed kasi tatlo lang yung license at the essence of an NC is a certificate so ang NC by definition that is a skill certificate so hindi ko sabihin na skill certificate so uh, pag meron kayong NC at at certain skill na yon magaling kayo doon you are found by uh, by by a certain um, institution or a cer or, or a certain um, testing agency na magaling kayo doon you are competent on that skill for example electrical installation and maintenance NC2 so ang ang scope ng EIM NC2 is residential and commercial wiring if you have a certificate on that ay big sabihin doon ang skill niyo sa sa presidential and commercial wiring is competent no tama uh, you pass the uh, the industry standard pero 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 pero, pero hindi nakalagay doon that you are a license no so ganun yon ganun yung pinagkaiba kasi meron kasi ano eh uh, uh, misnomer or merong ano merong Merong maling pagkakaintindi na kapag NC holder ka na, you are a license. Because according to the law, the only license are the RME, REE, and PEE. No? So, kaya nga, kaya nga kanina sa isang section ng law, si, uh, sinasabi doon na if you are uh, doing electrical works no? sa isang building, so, in, pwede na na hindi ka mag-take ng board exam as long as you are under supervision of a licensed electrical practitioner with a valid certificate of registration no so kaya yun yung nakalagay sa section kasi ang as nasabi doon na licensed electrical practitioner are only these three mm. so dito naman sa section 31 sinasabi dito kung sin, kung ano yung scope na pwede gawin ng isang PEE, RE, REE, at RME. So, for PEE, full practice of electrical engineering. So, ano yung full practice? So, including the sign and seal of plans, the design, the distribution, and the sale of all electrical equipment, systems, and any other um, and any other na mga works na nangailangan ng a, uh, ng mga electrical computations no so full practice for REE naman no full practice of electrical engineering except sign and seal of electrical plans and design so ibig sabihin yung PEE at REE pareho lang sila ng scope pero sa REE lang walang pirma no yung sa registered electrical engineer hindi siya pwede pumirma ng electrical plans and design specification. Pwede pumirma lang is the PEE. Okay. For the RME, full practice of electrical engineering except sign and seal of electrical plans and designs and not in excess of 500 kilovolt amperes or KVA or in excess of 600 volts. So, yung sa RME, so, hindi kasama pa rin yung sign and seal of electrical plan. Tapos, yung sa supervision naman of electrical works, dapat hindi lalagpas ng 500 kVA or 600 volts. Ang kanyang e, so, e, so supervise na, ano, na, na project. Okay. So, prohibition, no? So, if you are you are practice or offer to practice electrical engineering. So, ano yung mga hindi pwede gawin, no? Okay. So, if you are practicing or, or offering the practice of electrical engineering without having previously obtained a certificate of registration and a professional license from the Board of Electrical Engineering except as provided by Section 14. So, yung Section 14, that is yung uh, foreign reciprocity na pwede yung foreign na mga ng mga electrical engineer ang mag-practice 
kahit ano kahit hindi mag-take ng exam bibigyan lang ng special permit so hindi hindi ka pwede mag-practice ng electrical engineering if wala kang certificate of registration or valid license so use or attempt to use a season certificate registration commercial license or the seal of other so ito nagpanggap ka na ikaw yung si engineer ganito no so nag ginamit mo yung license na hindi sa iyo so ito bawal yon so give false or forge evidence of any kind or to any member uh, thereof no in obtaining certificate of registration or personal license okay ano ibig sabihin ng ano ng letter C for example if during that the application for examination so you are giving false or forge evidence for example yung yung TOR mo or yung or yung certificate of employment mo is ano gawa-gawa lang then kahit pa po pumasa ka sa exam pwede ka na hindi hindi i-issue sa iyo yung yung license so kasi bawal yan that is part of the prohibition falsely impersonate any registrants of like or different name. Ibig sabihin ito. So, nagpanggap ka na ikaw yung pumasa. No? So, that that is uh, prohibited. Attempt to use a revoke or suspended certificate or an expired professional license. So, ibig sabihin ito is you, you use your expired or yung license mo na ano na revoke or na suspend so hindi yan pwede so you use in connection with his name or otherwise assume use or advertise any title of description tending to convey the impression that he is a PEE REE or RME without holding a valid certificate or valid license so ito maraming ano dito maraming maraming natatamaan sa ganito kasi um Usually, no, ang nagsasabi that they are licensed, no, they are licensed, so uh, may license ako, but in reality, they don't have a valid license and a valid certificate of registration. So that is uh, not allowed, or that is prohibited under RA 7920. Then the next one, ito, marami dami din ito. Sign a document involving electrical design plan, technical specs, valuation, and the like on behalf of a professional electrical engineer. No? So, ito, hindi pwede. The only licensed electrical practitioner that can sign and seal any electrical plan or design specification is the PEE. Kahit, kahit pa REE or RME, hindi yan pwede pumirma ng plano. If you are doing that, then you are doing something wrong or which is considered as a crime under RA 7920. So, ito naman about personally required. Section 33. No? So, um, ano yung mga, uh, mga required personnel when it comes to certain buildings? No? So, for example, electrical plant. No? So, with total installed generating capacity of any size, employing voltage of any standard rating, no? So, mga electrical plant, mga planta. So, dapat mayroong isang PEE or isang REE. Pero, if, if ever the capacity, no, is... Um, 500 kVA or lower or hindi siya nalagpas ng 600 volts so pwede ang i-hire as the supervising engineer is an RME no kapag industrial plant naman with any rating so dapat may isang PEE or isang REE ang mas supervise or i-hire ng planta pero kapag hindi siya lalagpas ng 500 kVA at hindi rin lalagpas ang 600 volts so pwede RME no? okay so water crops or electric locomotive so yung mga barko so kapag 
pwede isang PEE or REE. Kapag hindi naman siya lumagpas ng 500 kVA or 500 kilowatts, tapos hindi rin lalagpas ng 600 volts. No? So, ang, ang pwede nating i-hire is isang RME. No? So, dito, um, ang, ang common dito, if hindi lang lalagpas ng 500 kVA at 600 volts, pwede ang mag ang ang magsusurvise ng planta na yon or ng barko na yon is an RME. Okay. So, this section shall not apply to any insulation, no? Which has a connected load of 50 kilovolt or less employed voltages of not more than 150 volts. And for insulation which are designed to automatic and do not require resident personnel for their safe operation. So, the ibig sabihin ito, So for example, if a certain commercial establishment or an industrial plant, ang kanyang load is hindi lalagpas ng 50 kilovolt or 250 volts, pwede na, na hindi siya mag-employ ng licensed electrical practitioner. No? So ito yung condition, 50 kVA to 50 volts. Pwede na kahit walang REE, RME or REE na na magba-manage o na mag or mag 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 supervise sa maintenance ng establishment na yon no kasi ito kasi um, provided lang na dapat under the charge of a duly registered personnel no yung kanilang maintenance and repair is under the charge of a duly registered personnel tapos Mayroon tinatawag na yearly inspection ng establishment which will be conducted by the PEE or pwede rin ng REE or ng RME. No? So, ang exception lang na walang i-hire na REE, RME or PEE is 50 kilovolt, 250 volts pero may condition. Dapat ang kanilang maintenance and repair is para sa uh, under yung kanyang maintenance and repair sa isang registered personnel so REE, PEE and RME. Tapos then may yearly inspection na gagawin ng PEE, REE or RME. Okay, so preparation of plans, supervision of installation, application of the Philippine Electrical Code. No? So it shall be unlawful for any person not authorized under this act to prepare plans, electrical valuations, or specification for any electrical wiring, equipment, or system, and no installation thereof shall be undertaken unless the plans, designs, valuations, specification, and, and prepared by or under the responsible in charge of and signed and sealed by an PEE. No? And the construction permit for execution thereof is first secured And unless the work is done in accordance with the Philippine Electrical Code. So basically, Section 34, sinasabi ng Section 34, it is unlawful no, or considered as a crime if may isang tao na gagawa ng plano, electrical specification, ng kahit anong electrical wiring, equipment, or system na hindi naman siya licensed to do so. No? tapos magsusupervise ng installation no na hindi rin naman siya license tapos kahit kahit pa license but the work is not in accordance with the Philippine Electrical Code so hindi rin siya pwede no so sa sa section na to sinasabi lang na first dapat the one who is in charge of the installation must be a licensed electrical practitioner tapos ang lahat ng ginagawa is in accordance with the Philippine Electrical Code okay so practice not allowed for firms and corporations so section 35 no ang ang, ang summary dito is walang company walang uh, engineering firm or corporation that will register as an electrical engineer kasi yung license is an individual hindi company or a corporation 
So, yun ang sinasabi nito. Then, section 36. So, if you are, if you have an engineering firm or meron kang business na nag, nag-handle ng ano, ng, ng, uh, ano, ng ele- electrical works or nakontrata ng electrical works, so you must always post your certificate of registration on a uh, on your office no sa office mo so ito yung posting of certificates certificate of special is specialty no so pwede rin na mag-issue ang board of electrical engineering ng certificate of specialty sa isang PEE no sa PEE lang siya pwede issue who have been screened and un- recommended by the IIEE na siya ay magaling sa ganitong field ng electrical engineering dito section 38 so foreign um, reciprocity so no foreign engineer shall be admitted to take a board examination be given a certificate or be entitled to any rights and privileges under this act unless the country of which he is a su- subject or citizen is specifically permits Filipino engineer to practice within within its territorial limits on such the same basis as the subject or citizens of such. So, ito, kunyari, mayroong gusto dito mag-practice ng electrical engineering. So, kung sinabi ko kanina, nabigyan sa special permit, mayroon ding chance na hindi yun uh, i-allow ng board, lalo na kapag sa country na kung saan siya nanggaling, is hindi rin pwede mag-practice yung ano yung isang Pilipino engineer doon kahit meron pa siyang kahit kung makakuha pa siya ng ano ng special permit no so ito ang sabihin ng foreign reciprocity so you you could only practice here in the Philippines with special permit if if sa country mo kung saan ka nang galing allowed din yung isang Pilipino doon na magpractice ng electrical engineering with special permit so equal no equal basis so section 39 so enforcement of the act by the officers of the law no so it shall be duly of all constituted officers of the law the national government or any provincial city or municipal government of any pol- political subdivision there thereof to prosecute any person violating the provision of this act no so ibig sabihin nito dapat i-enforce ng national government or ng mga ng mga LGO ang law no tong law na to at meron silang kara meron silang karapatan to prosecute no to uh, file a case for those person violating the provisions of this act no the secretary of justice or re, or his assistant shall act as legal advisors of the board and render such legal assistance as may be necessary in cre- carrying out the provisions of this act. Then we have the penalty clause. So, ano yung penalty if ever you uh, you are found guilty no, of doing unlawful acts no, with regards to this law? So, meron kang fine no of not less than 10,000 nor more than 50,000 pesos so this is for today this is now adjusted for it for inflation so hindi alam kung ano to so bahala na si judge or pwede ka ring makulong from a period not less than 6 months nor more than 5 years so if you are uh, pretending to be a licensed professional or a licensed electrical engineer tapos um nahuli ka then you can be in prison six months uh, or uh, at least six months or not more than five years. Pwede, at, at, pwede ka ding mabigyan ng fine no? of 10,000 not more than 50,000. Pero ngayon, this is now adjusted to inflation. So medyo mataas na ito ngayon. No? Okay. So the transitory provisions so when we say transitory tra- transitory 
provision. So this is the provisions that will carry over the provisions of the old electrical engineering law, the RA 184, no? So yung terms of office ng mga board members, tapos yung mga bagong license na ibibigay sa mga dati na mga electrical engineers under RA 184, no? So yung mga associate electrical engineer, assistant electrical engineer, tapos din sa mga master electrician, no? Kasi dati, merong, uh, yung dati kasi yung RA 184, so merong PEE, merong associate electrical engineer, merong assistant electrical engineer, tapos may master electrician. Ay, yung tatmo na lang, PEE, REE, at RME. Okay, final provisions. So, the repealing clause. So, under section 43, so, dito na kasaan na yung RA184 and any other existing na mga uh, na mga ordinance, no, sa mga LGU, no, ay na repel na dahil sa RA 7920 no so are hereby repealed or amended accordingly so because of the RA 7920 then we have the uh, no this clause no section 44 if any part of this act or application of such provisions or circumstances is declared unconstitutional so ito upon upon reviewing by the supreme court na may makita na part ng law na unconstitutional un the, the remainder of the act or the application of such provision to the other to ad, other persons or um, circumstances shall not be affected by such declare, declaration no then the effectivity clause no so this act shall take effect 30 days no 30 days so following its full publication on official gazette or newspaper of circulation. So, the Senate President sa pag-approve ng act na to is si Igardo J. Angara. The Speaker of the House is si Jose de Venecia Jr. Tapos, ang, ang President na pumirma nito is si Fidel V. Ramos. No? So, that is approved February 24, 1994. 